Hi, this is Father Al bringing you another episode of the Barefoot Confessor. If you remember last year around this time, I brought to you two different recipes that are served on Easter Sunday in Polish and Slovak and other Eastern European countries and, and cultures. And I thought I would just continue uh, the theme this year with some of the other foods that are served on Easter Sunday. Uh, my family, who is Polish, Irish, and German, my mom was Irish and German, would eat this kind of meal every Easter Sunday. Uh, the only thing we never did make, my mom was the cook, so she didn't make the uh, Easter cheese that I'm going to show you how to make today. I learned how to make this once again up at the Mother House of the Sisters of St. Cyril Methodius, and it is an absolutely simple, almost too simple, um, a recipe. It only has three ingredients, milk, eggs, and a little bit of salt. And what we're making is a, uh, uh, a cheese, an egg cheese. It's almost like a solidified custard. And they would use this along with the ham, the kielbasa, and the hard-boiled eggs, and the pasca bread on Easter Sunday as part of their meal. They would use this as the cheese. So what I'm doing right now is I have a uh, pan of water it's just around maybe a third of the way up. We're going to be doing a double boiler and we're going to be cooking the eggs and the milk on top of this, but we don't want the pan to touch the water. So this is very, very simple. It's actually a rather cheap uh, <laughs> meal. It doesn't make a whole lot, um, but we're going to take four cups of milk. And we're going to set this on top of this water that is just slightly simmering. And we're going to just let that get warm a little bit. So right now it's cold and my hands are clean, so don't worry about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take 12 eggs. And these are 12 extra large eggs. We'll make a nice, uh, very rich um, uh, egg cheese. And we're just going to crack the eggs and we're going to add them one at a time as we slowly cook this, what would normally be a custard, you'd stop before it would start to scramble, but we're actually going to get to the point where we're going to be scrambling these eggs um, so that they form into uh, a nice pale yellow, um, almost like cottage cheese. And we're gonna wrap it up into a cheesecloth and we're going to, to uh, squeeze out all of the, the, the water and we're gonna let it set for uh, a number of hours, and you'll see that it will solidify into a cheese-like consistency. It, it probably looks more a little bit more like solid butter, but it is something that is traditional in Polish and Slovak um, Easter celebrations. I really have a feeling that the reason why there is uh, the uh, Easter Sunday morning celebrations are so egg-heavy, we have hard-boiled eggs, as, as a lot of uh, cultures do. We have hard-boiled eggs. We have uh, this cheese that's made out of a dozen eggs and, and milk. And of course, they would probably make much more than what we're making right now. And I think the reason is, is that if you, in, in Lent, for most of the history of the church, the um, uh, whole season of Lent, not only would you not eat meat, not just on Ash Wednesday or Good Friday, but you wouldn't eat meat for the entire season of Lent. And also, for most of the history of the, of the life of the church, you not, neither would you eat any of the byproducts that came from meat. So, from eggs come chicken, and from uh, cows come milk, or from sheep comes milk. And so they would also abstain from meat, dairy, and from eggs. And so for the entire six weeks of Lent, they would not be having those things. That's why we have Fat Tuesday, that day before Ash Wednesday, when you more or less use up your, your, your meats, your lards, your eggs, and your dairy, you make donuts and you make uh, pastries and all those things because you're going to be going into the great fast, the great Lenten season. Most of us think that you can't keep eggs out, but the reality is, is that unless, if you get fresh eggs, you can leave them out on the counter for a good long time and they will be fine. I have a feeling that what happened is that the... Uh, uh, people were, were keeping all of their eggs and their milk, um, probably even some of it letting it to go to cottage cheese, to, to sour, to be using all the milk products that they could. And then eventually, um, they had all of these things after four or five, six weeks of Lent, and then they would be able to use them all to celebrate Easter Sunday. So into this milk, I'm going to put 
just around a half a teaspoon of salt. Somebody asked me recently, I made this the other day just to, because uh, I hadn't done it for a long, long time. So we're, this is starting to get nice and warm. And uh, somebody asked me if, if this isn't just sort of um, kind of, if it was like a sharp cheese, not at all. It is the most mild flavor you could ever imagine. So what we're going to do is sort of one egg at a time. We're going to put that into the um, slowly simmering, and I'm going to turn that down a little bit, because this will scorch pretty quickly. You just put a couple eggs in at a time, break them up, make a mess like I'm doing right now, and put them in, and then just keep whisking. If you've ever made a custard before, you, you know, you, you put sugar and some vanilla, things like that, into here. What we're going to do is we're going to go past the custard stage, and we are going to let these begin to scramble, but in a very, very slow and gentle way. There's not going to be any color on these. It's not like, uh, like, a, like an omelet or anything like this. Uh, if you've ever made like a French omelet, that's very, very uh, small little curds, very um, soft. That's what it's going to end up looking like. This takes around maybe seven or eight minutes, which you'll just have to let me talk to you while this is coming to, a, to the scramble stage. I'll put these in. So to make sure you break the yolks up and then just keep on um, whisking. You don't want them, oh, come on. Make sure you have a cloth near you so that you can redo this. And I got it all over the floor and all over the, um, I left the sink routing, hold on. So I'm gonna put the last two eggs in. And like, like Julia Child when she dropped the chicken, just remember, you're the only one in your kitchen. So I'm sure we're not all the most perfect uh, cooks. So I'm just going to keep on whisking this. Just do it gently. It will start to form like a little bit of a skin on the bottom and you wanna just keep on going around the sides. I think the reason why it worked out a little bit better the other day, I did it over at the rectory and I had a much, uh, uh, larger pot here, but I was just using this one that's here in the parish center. And so we're just going to gently keep on stirring. The other thing that I'm going to show you how to make uh, is another thing that is just traditional for Easter Sunday, and that is uh, what is called um, uh, chiqua. And chiqua is just the uh, horseradish, red beets, a little sugar, and a little bit of vinegar that you uh, don't even cook, you just um, grind it all up together, and that is used on top of your ham, and also we eat it a lot on top of hard-boiled eggs. It's traditionally something that's d done for Easter, but I love it so much that I'll make that occasionally and um, eat that on hard-boiled eggs over the rectory. None of the other guys seem to eat it, so I, I, I get to eat an awful lot of horseradish uh, through the year. Uh, so that is called chiqua, and this is called in this egg cheese, in Polish is called sidik, uh, and in Slovak it's called harutka. And so it's just a, a way to use up the eggs and the cheese, and you'll see how uh, wonderful it is. Once again, the eggs in, uh, at Easter time remind us of new life, of coming out of the tomb. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, the, the, the red meats and the horseradish, which can be rather bitter and sharp, reminds us of the passion of the Lord and the blood that he shed that colors the horseradish. Uh, what I'm using today is just um, canned red beets and canned um, and jarred horseradish. When I was little, we used to grow horseradish out in our backyard. And every year it got stronger and stronger. And on Holy Saturday morning, my dad and actually the boys, we would all go out to the picnic table. My father had one of those, I think he got it from his mother, was one of those uh, old meat grinders, and we'd clean that up good, and then we would start to put the horseradish through. Well, the horseradish was so strong sometimes, we would be crying out there at the picnic table um, as we were making this uh, horseradish red beet uh, condiment. And there, there was always kind of a, uh, 
competition in my family who could who could eat the uh, the strongest horseradish. I like it strong, but I don't like it to where it um, you know burns your nose or anything like that. So this is starting starting to thicken up very well. Um, you can see there's the water is really coming to a nice little simmer. I'm going to turn that down even a little bit and just keep on stirring. So this is not a hard recipe to do or to, uh, to make. It's starting to, to get more like little um, scrambled eggs. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I bought some cheesecloth from the store and we're just going to, to pour that in once this gets nice and thick. We're going to wrap it up, tie it off, and, and, and squeeze out as much of the, the water that we can. And then we're just going to hang that. And eventually, when you get as much water by hanging it, um, I'm going to just hang it over a pan, uh, put some rubber bands around the, the um, cheesecloth, and then I'm going to uh, put a, a, a long wooden handle through it and just hang it over this same pot. So this is getting really, really nice and thick. This would be just great as a custard right now. If you put some, um, uh, if you put some vanilla in it or some sugar, but this is, it, it's very mild. It's just the salt, a little bit of salt. So you can see this is going and going and going. It takes probably around eight to 10 minutes. I'm not sure how long I've been going with this, but it's, it's getting there. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. There's so many traditions when it comes to Christmas and Easter that have such deep symbolic meaning. Um, and it also is a reminder of, of those fasts. You know, the, you used to, be, used to have to fast in, in Advent as well. And then you'd have the uh, Christmas celebrations. That's sort of where you have the seven fishes on, on, on Christmas Eve because the fast wasn't ended. And the same way with Easter for almost that entire six weeks, for the entire six weeks, you uh, fasted from meat, from uh, eggs and from dairy. I would imagine that most of your diet was very healthy for those, um, those six weeks of Lent, that you would have, um, you'd have bread and grains, you would have vegetables, and you would have fish. I don't know if you can see this. This is now around the thickness of, sort of looks a little bit like polenta, uh, but much softer. And we're just going to keep on going probably another minute or two, and it's going to be very, very thick. So when it comes to the, uh, all you really need is a double boiler, a dozen eggs, four cups of milk, uh, half a teaspoon of salt, a colander, and some um, cheesecloth. It's going to be very mild. It's probably, in many ways, it's, they call it egg cheese, but in reality, it's not a cheese. It's not uh, left to um, ferment, even though you're using the milk. You normally don't put, you obviously don't put eggs into cheeses. So this is becoming very, very, very nice and thick. A lot of the water is evaporating off. And this may be one of the more boring video because I'm just standing here uh, doing this. But the important thing is, don't, don't walk away from it. It only takes a few minutes. It is, um, it, will, it will scorch on the bottom and then you'll have all of that. You don't want any, any kind of uh, coloring, uh, any, any brown spots or bird marks through the cheese. It's a very, very, very light colored cheese. So there's going to be some milk, uh, some milk products in here and eventually we're gonna squeeze those out. So I think this is just about done. You can see it. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to pull this over here. And if you can see it, that is the, it, it has turned almost like scrambled eggs. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, I'm going to empty this first. So I have um, the uh, cheesecloth inside of a colander. I'm going to put that right over top of the, um, right on top of that, that pan so that it's going to catch it. And I'm going to start pouring. I'm going to start pouring this right into here. You see how thick that is? It really is. It's just, when I say it's like scrambled eggs, in many ways it is scrambled eggs. So you can 
hear all of that dripping out. So, I'm going to let that drip out a little bit, pull that up, you'll get more water out. And eventually, it's going, we're going to tie it together. I'm going to use this to hang it over the, you can hang it over the sink to let it drip out, or you can just very simply uh, leave it over the pan in which you were um, doing the double boiler. Okay, so while we let that uh, cool off a little bit, I'm going to show you uh, how we do the horseradish and, and beet uh, mixture. That becomes the condiment for all of the, for the ham, the kielbasa, and for the eggs on Easter Sunday. Okay, I'm going to make the chiqua, which is just the horseradish beet uh, sauce. So all I'm using is one can of whole beets, not the pickled ones. So just put those in there. A teaspoon of brown sugar. Gives it a little sweetness. You know, the red beets are sweet and also one teaspoon of white vinegar. I'm putting that into this little mini um, food processor and you could do much bigger batches, which I usually do. And, and you're, we're, all we're gonna do is take, I have a cup and a half, is a lot, of, of, of horseradish. Uh, this is not the, um, the, the creamy horseradish. This is just plain horseradish. I think it has a little bit of, um, has a little bit of uh, 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 vinegar in it. So all we're going to do is, is grind this up, start to do a couple of grinds, go back and forth. And that's all it is, if you can believe it. It really is, if you like horseradish, the little red beets just give it a little bit of a, of a, a little bit of a, a tartness, a little sweetness from the sugar, the vinegar, and it just tastes great on ham with a piece of uh, a nice roll. Um, we oftentimes we just chop up a hard boiled egg. You can put the, um, the, the, the egg cheese on it. Makes a great, great meal on Easter Sunday. So all we're gonna do is take this off. I'm gonna dump it right here in the bowl. And this makes uh, a good bit. Now, I'll be honest with you, the recipe that I was following suggested that you use two cups of red beets for one jar, one can of, I mean, two cups of horseradish for one uh, little jar of uh, red beets. And the reality is I have a feeling this is gonna be pretty hot just in as, as it is. Uh, usually the, the the jars of horseradish that you get at Giant or Wise or Cronio's or something like that isn't going to be real hot. There, as I told you, I oftentimes for the parish will go down to the restaurant depot, and that it has a little pound um, plastic uh, jug, and it is called extra extra hot horseradish. It's the hottest horseradish I've ever tasted, even more so than the um, the ones that we used to dig up and grind up. So this is exactly what it looks like. You're gonna put this right on top. You can, you can make it more um, pureed more, keep it a little chunky like this. This is just an essential part of an Eastern European uh, Easter. So there you have that, that was simple. Now let me show you this. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to uh, tie off the um, uh, harutka or the sidik that it's called in Polish. And you're going to let it cool a little bit and you're going to squeeze out as much of this juice, uh, this liquid as you possibly can. If you notice it only comes down to maybe like a little bit of a, maybe a pound of, uh, of egg cheese. So you're going to squeeze it out as best you can. Take a couple rubber bands or just one is fine and tie that around a couple times so that it's really tight. And to get a, get a good sized rubber band because um, those little ones have a tendency to break. So you just squeeze as much out as you can. Okay, you're going to take 
a wooden spoon or uh, a long, doesn't have to be wooden, but um, some kind of long object and you're going to just push it right through here. Actually, you can just put it right through the, uh, the rubber band, which I, I tied very tight. No, I'll do it this way. So we're going to put it through. It can actually come right through the cheesecloth. And I'm not, I'm not fighting the opening on the other side. Okay, so I just got a piece of the rubber band. I'm going to take this and take this out. Before I hang this above here, I want you to see how much water has come out of that. Okay, so we're just going to hang this right over here. And I wish I could do it this way. There. Okay, so we're just going to hang it over and it's just going to keep on dripping. For, uh, leave the, you can leave this out here for around an hour or so, let it drip, 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 and then eventually you're just going to put it back in the colander. The way I do is put it in the pan, put something heavy on it, and you can even leave it overnight and it will form into this nice, nice cheese. And I'll show you an example of what it looks like. So I made this the other day, and it's not the most uh, perfect ball because I, I, I didn't get it tight enough so that it would form a nice ball. And then when you flatten it a little bit, it, it has a nice thing. But you'll notice that it, it just sort of comes, it becomes like a nice little cheese, almost like a, it's an egg cheese. And it's something that is really, it's not an acquired taste because there's nothing that anybody's gonna say, oh, I don't like that. It's so mild that you can um, make it very easily and I'm sure um, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And I have a feeling the kids would like it because it's like a pressed uh, scrambled egg. So uh, just a little bit about our Eastern European traditions. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the season of Lent and a good and holy and happy Easter. God bless.